Are you tired of watching hours of confusing videos by guitar music theory experts on YouTube and still not understanding a darn thing you're on about? Then you need Song, the Guitar Chord Family app. Song organizes 6,000 guitar chords into their relative major and minor keys, showing you all the ones that sound good together. Downloading Song is like downloading music theory straight into your brain. Try it now for free. Link is in the description. Hey, what's up everybody? Brad the Guitologist here. Here we see a television that I just picked up down the street from me that was in the garbage. I was walking with my daughter. We came upon this garbage pile that had a new television box in the garbage pile. And usually when you see a new television box, you'll almost always see the old television sitting there beside it. But there, sure enough, there it was, the old TV. They even left the remote for the thing. Uh, this is a 2010 Samsung plasma screen, 42 inch. Let's see, they even left the batteries in the remote, which was, I guess, that was kind of them. But it actually does power on. We do have a LED light. I've got it plugged in at the moment. So let's see what the problem with this thing is and see if we're going to be able to fix it. So if I turn it on, like I said, it does power up, but I'll show you what the problem is. You can already kind of see it right there. You see a black bar. It's running from one side of the screen to the other. And if you get zoomed in, you can see some distortion where the black bar is. It might be kind of hard to see the bar, but there's just one little black bar that's not registering properly. But you can actually see a little bit better the black bar. It starts right there and it kind of ends right there. It goes all the way across the screen. And I think I might know exactly what is causing that. So let's open this TV up. See if we can fix it and see if we can get ourselves a free 42-inch plasma screen television. Like I said, this thing is from about 2010. Uh, this will replace the TV that's up here. I think that one's a 36-inch. But let's open it up and see what's going on with it. These screws are a little bit longer, these four that go right here, but man, this thing has got tons of screws, my goodness. Oh, there is a, there is a screw right there. For good measure, my God, let's count the screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 24 screws. <laughs> wow. Okay. This is the, it should be the power board. Um, we do want to, while we're in here, we want to check these uh, capacitors. Just make sure none of these are really obviously bulging out or anything on the top. And it doesn't appear that any of these are. But that's not what's causing our problem today, I don't believe anyway. No, those all look okay. Uh, so what I think we have is we have a situation where one of these connectors, and I think it's probably one of these lower ones down here, um, because our bar was pretty low, I think it's either probably this connector or this connector, um, is loose. And also, a lot of times you will get situations where these grounds, these ground screws are loose so one of these boards might not be getting good ground connection also and I think that's a strong possibility but I think uh, even stronger possibility is one of these ribbon connectors probably either this one or this one is not getting good connection so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all these off uh, we'll spray it with some contact cleaner reattach it we'll do that for each one of these along this whole side up here and see if that fixes the problem. If it doesn't fix the problem, it could end up being a case where it's one of these uh, these connectors over on this side. If we're in the process of doing this anyway, what we might do is just release all of these. Uh, we'll take this whole board off, uh, spray the connectors, reconnect it, spray these connectors, reconnect those, and try it again. If, it's, if it still doesn't work, we may be looking at uh, one of these chips being bad. It could be 
maybe one of these but also we're gonna go through the whole th the whole system and tighten down every single one of these ground screws because over the course of 10 years which is how old this this thing is those ground screws will have a tendency to kind of work loose because of the cycles of heat and cool heat and cool heat and cool over 10 years those kind of have a tendency to work their way loose so we're gonna go through this entire thing and just hit every one of those ground screws with a turn of the screwdriver so we've got a long strip of tape that's holding these down over the top of all this so we'll carefully remove that in case you're not familiar with how these ribbons come off there's a there's a black bit here at the back of the connector you basically just lift up on this black bit so that pops up and then the rest of this should just slide right out and there's two there's some little tabs here on the side of the actual ribbon that you can push uh, to get those out of there now I'm gonna spray I'm gonna spray these connectors as well and we'll pop up all of these and reseat them between the two boards like so. So that's removed this board. So you can see the pins in there. So what we're gonna do is just uh, reseat this again, but I'm gonna spray those pins first with some contact cleaner. So we'll just give those a spray and reseat them and make sure that they're straight. Now we'll put the ground screws back in. Now these screws once again these ground this board to the chassis and if the if it's a loose connection you may be experiencing a problem as a result of that even oh that one's real loose that screw right there was real loose i bet most all of these are going to be loose after 10 years that one's loose that one's real loose oh yeah that one's real loose. That one wasn't bad. That one's not bad. That one's loose. Loose as hell. Loose. Eh, somewhat loose. Not loose. Yep, somewhat loose right there. There's one over here I can't reach because there's a piece of plastic in the way, so I'm going to have to remove this piece of plastic first so I can get to this ground screw. Uh, there's another couple of ribbons over here on this side. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do these as well. This one's kind of hard to get all the way out. I'm not sure what's up with that. But... So I'm just going to spray it with some cleaner and then reseat it. Okay, so now to spray each of these connectors and reseat these. Alright, these can be a little bit fiddly to try to put back in here. Just be patient. Alright, I think before we put the back back on it, we might as well just fire it back up and see if it's working. See if that fixed the issue. No, it's still there. Still got the problem there. So I think I want to get a chopstick after a couple of those areas and see if uh, I can get it to change it all. And if I can, then we'll have a better idea of what might be going on with it. I'm kind of wondering if it could be the other end of the ribbon cable because the ribbon cable actually goes up under and then into the the actual screen so I, th I think you know, I might have to take this plastic this housing off right here um, and see what's see what's going on with the outer connector and we'll we'll try to clean those connectors as well 
I took out the the electronics, all this this chassis. I raised it up, and I was hoping that that these ribbon cables were socketed on both ends. The ribbon cable is hardwired to the screen, so it's all part of it. Um, but I don't think the problem is with the screen. I think the problem is on the board, and I'll show you why I think that. There are some rows of uh, resistors here, so it starts way down here on this end. Over here, you can barely see. And then here's a row of some resistors, same row, row, and here's a row, and here's a row, here's a row, and here's a row. Now, all of these are laid out exactly the same way, so every one of these, they'll start out with a 2.3 meg resistor. This one's up a little to 2.7, so that one's gone up some. I don't know if you can you see those. I hope you can see that. All right, so that one's on the order though of two point, you know, two point three, two point seven. The second one's going to be about one k. Uh, this one should be. What's that one? Four point seven k. This one should be a one. Now this is one of the only ones with a with a resistor in that spot. That's a one, and then we we end up with a. 3.7k and we're, we should follow about the same pattern so it should be like a 2.5 meg 1k okay so without a schematic I can and, and these aren't labeled either so I can tell what they should be by looking at all the other ones 4.7k on that one there's missing one missing one and then we should be back to what a 3 point something k yeah 3.7k so all of these are going to be about they're following the same pattern you see what I mean? 2.5 meg, 1k, uh, 4.7k, should be back to 1k again, and then there's a missing one right there, so it does, it, this one does not have one that, in that position. Then it should be like a 3.7k once again. So you see what I mean? Same pattern. But if we move down here where, where the problem is, right here on this ribbon, uh, it appears to be that half of the ribbon is using... Um, this chip and half of the ribbon is using this chip. Well, if we go to this chip, you remember we started out with a 2.3 meg on all these other ones, and this one is 25 ohms. So that little resistor right there, I'll show you which one I'm talking about. So that resistor right there is shorted. Here, I'll show you. Or it's, it's practically shorted. It's a uh, 25 ohms resistance where it's supposed to be 2.5 or so meg uh, then we should be back to 1k and then 4.7k and then we've got a couple of missing ones and then we have a 3.7k so it, the whole rest of them follow the pattern except for that first one which is sh which appears to be shorted and then down here just for good measure we'll check that it's 2.5 meg so that's correct 1K, 4.7, 1K, and it should be a 3.7 again. K, okay. and it is. So you see what I mean. All of these little rows of resistors are follow this exact same pattern except for this one, and this one happens to be the one that's faulty. So I'm thinking that little resistor right there, that, that guy right there needs to be replaced with a 2.5 meg and we might be back in business i just have to track down a surface mount 2.5 meg resistor many unbearable hours later okay so i got a strip of resistors in that i hope uh, is the correct value i, I think i got 2.2 meg and i hope they're the correct size and value that will fit in this they look like they might be a little bit small which could be a problem maybe not okay i got a little solder paste on there and we'll go ahead and desolder this thing Put a little solder back on the pads there and this is the hard part these are so tiny um, and you know this is not my forte soldering SMD parts surface mount stuff is just not 
Not my thing, really. At least not yet. Maybe it will become my thing. I don't know. You can get good at anything, man, if you practice enough. I just think, uh, you know, just need to practice. All right, so I just need one of these bad boys. So let's try to pop one of them out. And there she is. Um, I would like to... I don't know. I guess I'd like to keep the value side on the top this time, if possible. Flux and maybe it wasn't as difficult as I thought it might be, and I think it's on there. Pretty sure it is. Well, there's still a 23 ohm short. What happened? Did the pad just come? I think the pad just came off. I think the pad just came off the board just now. I believe that's what happened. Shit. Yeah, there's nothing left of the pad there. Um, and there's a short between the pins anyway. So that's... Yeah. It's shot. I think what was really shot is this chip uh, over here. The chip is probably bad, um, but now the pad's missing off the board too, so the board's bad. So, all right, I can check on eBay, I guess, and see if I could find this board. Yeah, let's look and see if we can find the board. But if not, that's it. That you know, this thing's garbage. We're gonna look up the model numbers and see if we can't find one that will work with this. Uh, the model number right there for the board looks like it's 42 U2P underscore YB. So when I tried to uh, fix that it just it wasn't working out that pad that closest one down here on the bottom just came right off of there i did not leave the heat on that for very long at all so i don't i don't think that was my fault that's just the pad was pretty much all gone and there is a little tiny bit of it left uh but when i measured across it i was able to barely get a connection and when i did it was measuring the 23 ohms when i tested the old resistor uh, it was measuring uh, open, so there was nothing on the old resistor at all. So what I think happened was uh, the old resistor went open, and for some reason it caused, uh, you know, it caused a pro another problem on down the line. Maybe something else kind of shorted out or probably destroyed the chip, I'm guessing. But we definitely need to look up those part numbers and see if we can't uh, find just this part right here. 82 kilometers later. So this Samsung TV that I pulled out of the garbage, uh, it's been a little while. The board that I was trying to replace on it, uh, I had ordered one and it came in and it was even worse off than the one that was in it when it, I got it out of the garbage. So I ended up getting my money back on that. It actually took a minute for that to happen too. Uh, so the original one was, let's see, I think it was this guy right here. The second one that I got, uh, it was even worse because it wouldn't come, it wouldn't light up any of the sections. I suppose it is possible though that this is some kind of different revision. Like the, you can see here, it's got a number one and this one's got a number three. But the thing is, if you read the actual codes, the part numbers, model number 42, let's see, 42U2P underscore YB. Yeah, see the same model number. It's a different revision, but it should st it should have still worked, but it, it did it did not. So I got my money back on that one, and then I ordered this one, and this one seems to have worked. And while we've got this thing out, let me just give you a little bit of a word of advice on stuff like this. If you ever see something um, in the trash or on the side of the road or something for pickup like this, there is so much stuff in here that you can salvage. This. Uh, power board, for instance, it was perfectly good. Um, this board over here, which is part of the logic board for the uh, output, the picture output, um, was perfectly good. But anyway, um, 
you get the point. All of these boards in here, you know, you could take these out and slap these up on eBay and make money out of each one of these boards and probably make it really worth your while. Also, these speakers down here, these easily come out and they these speakers are used in a lot of different models and these actually make really nice like desktop uh, style speakers. You could even mount these like up under your desk. Uh, run these to a little amplifier and these things sound actually really good which I mean you could obviously mount them inside of something larger like if you wanted a larger enclosure but if you just want you know a little sound system or something around your desk where you work um, these would be ideal for something like that just mount them up under the desk uh, and uh, just put them more you know sight unseen up under somewhere or in, in a piece of furniture even around your house and put a uh, hook them up to a Bluetooth and a little amplifier. Um, you can get little amplifiers all day long that would uh, push these. And these things sound actually really good for what they are. And uh, you know, it's a good thing to salvage stuff like this out of something that would otherwise just go to the landfill. Okay, so this thing is working now and the bars are gone. I think it almost might be beneficial to uh, shim the neck or cock the neck back slightly and, and be able to raise this up somewhat so you don't have to struggle with these strings. Yeah, definitely not bad. So anyway, that'll do it for this TV. I hope you guys have enjoyed this as much as I have. Um, I do enjoy picking things off the side of the road. I mean, clearly I'm going to be able to use this. It's not, it's not the greatest thing in the world. But from a few feet away, it looks really good. And uh, yeah, it should last a good long while, hopefully. So yeah, thanks guys for joining in and uh, we'll see y'all later.